Hello. Good morning to all. So this is my 20th lecture in this series on signal cell systems. So today I am going to discuss about the Fourier transform properties. Some of the properties because there are so many properties. I divide these properties in two lectures. In my first lecture I am going to discuss about seven properties that is linearity, time shifting, time reversal, time scaling, conjugation, differentiation and integration. Okay. So here first property if I take is a linearity. Two signals are given. Two signals are given x of t whose Fourier transform is capital X of omega y of t whose Fourier transform is capital Y of omega and I am adding taking the linear combination of these two signals and the Fourier transform if I find the Fourier individual Fourier transforms they also add up in the same proportion the way the signals are added so that is the property called linear linearity okay. now let us prove this is very simple so this is a x plus b y i am taking the linear combination of the two signals i am taking the fourier transform so and you have the equation here a direct substitution you have to do it here and after substitution and i think you have to i mean uh, uh, so you have to separate these terms so this is same thing so here you have to separate this things here and a and b are constants they will come out of the integration and this integral each integral you are replacing with the actual definition they are nothing but individual Fourier transforms so the property is proved so this is I am proving this So we have proved this property. So now let us move to the second property that is time shifting. So these properties are similar to Fourier series properties. So I mostly rush through this. You can easily understand this. Again, I have a signal X of T whose Fourier transform is capital X of omega. And if the signal is shifted by T naught units, T naught seconds, the Fourier transform is multiplied by a phase term which is proportional to T naught for a given omega. Okay, that means as omega changes, the shift changes. It is a linear uh, phase, I mean linear phase which has uh, uh, with respect to frequency. Now, let us consider the synthesis equation. How you prove this one? Let us prove this. So, we are going to prove this and x of t is 1 by 2 pi integral capital x to the power of j omega t d omega this is nothing but synthesis equation inverse Fourier transform equation replace t with t naught so i will get the delayed signal here and whatever this t this t is replaced with t minus t naught here now I can take e to the power of j omega t naught outside. It is a constant term. I can take it out. And the remaining as it is, I can write it here. So now, what is it? This term and this term both form the Fourier transform pair. This is Fourier transform pair. So that is, that is nothing but this equation. So that is nothing but what we wanted to prove, correct? So this one, this term, this term is nothing but this term, right hand side. So these two form the free transform pair, and these are complex. So when I take the magnitude of this one, see the free transform x of j omega, 
I can represent the magnitude theta. This is r theta form, polar form. So first one is magnitude, second one is phase term theta. And what about this after shifting? This term is missing here. Uh, let me write this one. What is this one? e to the power of minus j omega t naught. That is after shifting whatever we get the Fourier transform. e to the power of j omega t naught. This one. And what about the magnitude of this? Same magnitude. The phase is shifted by, I mean, j omega angle of j omega c angle of j omega minus omega t naught so what it means the shift phase phase of this for a uh, for a phase of the omega frequency is shifted by omega t naught which is proportional to t naught basically okay so that is what you have and that means magnitude doesn't change because you are just shifting the signal it's frequency won't change its uh, magnitude won't change only phase will change phase of particular omega will change okay so that is the physical interpretation of this now let us move to the next one that is time scaling we have the time scaling here and given the Ray transform ray, small x and capital X, and you scale the time independent variable by a. a is a non zero real number, it can be plus or it can be minus, but it should not be zero because if it is zero, then one by a there is a problem you cannot find. So, one by a it will become infinite. So it should not be zero other than zero a can be positive or a can be negative and it is a real number basically so in that case when when the time is scaled like this Fourier transform is also scaled by this here omega becomes omega by a so omega is uh, divided by this and amplitude also it is reduced earlier it was one the amplitude here it was one now the amplitude is one by a so there are two things frequency is scaled and amplitude is also scaled because of the time scaling so let us prove this this is the Fourier transform x x of a to take directly substitute in the equation so what you will get so this is what is the substitution in the equation then tau equal to 80 then what you will get you substitute 80 with tau then here t becomes see this is if i substitute here what is t t equal to tau by a tau by a correct so in place of this t this is the t you have to substitute this is tau by a but here tau by a actually tau by a has substituted this by a divided by a is coupled with omega e okay so that's why I'm not separately saying this one. So here uh, I can say that for a given tau, because this is dt equal to in this case also. So this is tau correct. So dt equal to d tau directly. So direct substitution you can make dt equal to d tau you can substitute. So the integral becomes like this. And here when you see clearly other than the omega, other than the tau, I have omega a by a that means the frequencies are scaled when a is greater than zero and a, if a is greater than zero means positive so omega by a for example let us say a equal to 2 for a equal to 2 what is happening here omega is becoming omega by 2 omega by 2 that means frequency has become half the frequency has become half a frequency has become half means the signal bandwidth will come down now it becomes half so signal bandwidth becomes half means in time domain the signal will expand so it is called dilation basically so when a is positive and uh, of course uh, a is positive means positive and greater than one you should say that 
is greater than 1 and greater than 1 then it is uh, it comes as the dilation of the signal but if it is less than 1 again it is different case okay it becomes compression so that is what I think this again I am not going to discuss several times I have discussed in my previous lectures and a is less than 0 means so I will get minus 1 by a because a is negative and here <coughs> So here uh, I have less than a and uh, you can you can make it so you can make it plus here okay so so ultimately what is happening here aside from the amplitude factor 1 by a a linear scaling in time by a factor a corresponds to a linear scaling in frequency by a factor 1 by a and vice versa so here it is this is a multiplied here it be, it appears as a division of the frequency okay so that is what is uh, you will get it depends on this basically you are dividing by a but if a equal to 2 it is omega by 2 if a equal to 0.5 then it is say a equal to 2 omega equal to omega by 2 let us take because a greater than 0 we are considering so it can be 1 by 2 also 1 by 2 is also greater than 0 so in that case what happens omega equal to or I call it as a new variable omega prime equal to it becomes 2 omega that means the spectrum has increased you now the spectrum has increased the signal will compress in time domain okay so it depends on value whether it is a greater than one whether a is less than one but in both cases we call this as a scaling in time domain scaling in time domain reflects as a scaling in the frequency domain that's all we can conclude here okay so now next property that is time reversal I have taken small x, I know it's Fourier transform capital X, then I reverse the signal in time, lateral inversion. So as I explained, it's like a mirror. So if I have something like this and I have to run back in time like this. Okay. So this is x of minus t, this is lateral inversion this is x of t so if i take the lateral inversion or time inversion what happens to the frequency transform i mean fourier transform so it, it runs back in the frequency same thing so all positive side shape will become negative side negative shape will become positive side okay but if you, if the capital x of omega E magnitude it is already even symmetric it doesn't matter whether the I mean let us say the spectrum is like this so it doesn't matter whether this comes this side or this goes this side it doesn't matter okay so because of even symmetry so and from scaling property we know the scaling property just substitute a equal to minus 1 so this is 1 by minus 1 so 1 by 1 here and a equal to minus 1 here and x of minus j over direct substitution here minus 1 and minus 1 I will get this the proof is very simple from the uh, scaling property so that is reversing a signal in time this is what I already told you reversing a signal in time reverses it for your transform in frequency that is the statement okay now let us move to the fifth property conjugation property and here conjugation means conjugation applies only for the complex numbers and here I am assuming that x of t is complex in general in general x of t is always complex even in the previous cases also I can assume the complex in ge for generality I need not assume x of t real I will always I can assume as the complex unless 
I say it is real, it is by default complex. So X of T is complex and capital X is also complex anyway. Then if I take the conjugate of this signal, complex signal, what happens to the Fourier spectrum? There are two things are happening here. One is uh, the frequency reversal is happening. Lateral inversion in frequency domain is happening. And the another thing is the conjugation is happening. So conjugation is happening means the phase will reverse. The phase of this one will reverse. And uh, frequency reversal means, I mean, uh, the coefficients on the right side, I mean, positive omega axis will become the negative, will come to the negative side and the negative side coefficients, negative uh, coefficients on the negative axis, negative omega axis will become the coefficients on the positive omega axis. So that is the meaning of this one. Two things are happening here. And I'm directly writing it here. What is this? Capital X. Capital X of star conjugation. What is capital X? Capital X is nothing but Fourier transform of the small x. So this is the equation I'm substituting directly. Then I have to take conjugation for the whole equation. Anyway, integration comes out of that. X becomes X star e to the power of minus j omega t becomes e to the power of plus j omega t. So that is two things are happening uh, for two terms here. Then replace, replace this omega with omega naught. So what we are doing, so earlier it was omega, now it has become minus j omega. Earlier it was j omega plus j omega, now it has become minus j omega. And earlier it was e to the power of plus j omega t. You remember? Plus j omega t. So that happened, plus j has come because of conjugation. Now again omega is replaced with minus j omega. So again you got the e to the power of j omega t term. Now what is this one? This is nothing but time signal and this is nothing but the Fourier transform equation, analysis equation this is. So I can say that this conjugation signal and this conjugation signal both form the Fourier transform pair here. Okay. So that is how uh, you can easily prove this property. Now let us talk about the sixth property that is differentiation property. When you talk about differentiation property, I have <coughs> again small x and capital X as a Fourier transform pair. I am differentiating the signal. When I differentiate the signal, the Fourier transform is shifted in phase by j omega. That means the phase shift is proportional to omega. That is linearly, uh, it is linearly increasing or decreasing as the frequency increases or decreases. Okay, so what it means is basically if I take, let us say, <coughs> let us say I have a spectrum whose shape is like this, let us say. Okay, let us say this is nothing but x of omega. To be specific, let us take it as the magnitude spectrum and this is omega. Now what is happening? This is x of omega. Now you are multiplying with j omega or if I take only magnitude, I will get omega. Omega, it is linearly increasing function with ordinate zero. That means it is passing through the origin. That is, this is the omega, correct? This is the omega. So this term, this is omega and this is also omega. So this is basically 45 degrees. I'll remove this. Too many omegas are there. So here, when I multiply this, what happens? See, when I multiply this, what is happening? When, when I multiply these two, the first one and second one, that is nothing but this, correct? So what is happening here? I will represent with another ink color. So, So here, when I multiply what is happening here, these two, so this is zero, so this is zero, 
the scale like this as you as the frequency increases it becomes like this correct so this has after multiplication with omega it has become like that that means the higher frequencies these are the higher frequencies are enhanced high frequencies are enhanced here enhanced so that is the reason when we say that when you uh, uh, when you differentiate a signal it is equal to that you are passing that signal through a high pass filter so high frequencies are enhanced higher frequencies are enhanced by differentiation operation okay that is what you have here so higher frequencies are enhanced okay so that is what is happening now let us resolve physical interpretation of this property now let us move to the proof of this one so here i am taking the synthesis equation again and i am differentiating both sides with the time because i want dx by dt then what happens here so let me change the color i'm not able to see this blue color uh, so here this is with respect to omega so t is constant uh, sorry with respect to sorry so this is with respect to t differentiation is with respect to t so t is variable j omega is constant so j omega has come forward before this and x of j omega again remains e to the power of j omega t is there okay so if i differentiate this i will get j omega e to the power of j omega t so that is what is j omega here e to the power of j omega t is here so now what i can say i can consider this as the new Fourier transform because the synthesis equation so this and this they both form Fourier transform P so it is nothing but this one correct so this is what is you have the uh, when I differentiate a signal basically uh, you are scaling the original spectrum in a linear fashion in which the higher frequencies are always emphasize with respect to lower frequencies and what happens to the DC DC is always zero because it's a high pass filter it won't pass the DC value okay so that is the physical interpretation of that now let us move to integration then integration here reverse operation to the differentiation basically and when I integrate the given signal, it Fourier transform is scaled by 1 by j omega. I should not say divided by, so I say that it is scaled or it is multiplied by 1 by j omega. So it is scaled by 1 by j omega. And this is additional term is added because of integration because once you integrate you have a con integration constant constant of integration so that can be shown to be pi capital x of zero delta omega what it means is you have a constant value after you integrate integration means it is like a low pass filter because differentiation is high pass filter integration is a low pass filter so when it is a low pass filter it enhances DC definitely it enhances the DC sometimes it even if there is no DC it creates DC as it is happening in this case additional term is coming that means a DC term is coming here so what is this uh, DC term basically what is its value if I take a spectrum let us take some spectrum is like sorry both sides you should be same so I will erase this and draw it again so if I take a spectrum like this, what is x of 0? x of 0 is here. So this is at omega equal to 0. This is x of 0. Correct? So the maximum value, this is x of 0. 
So this x of 0 and that is the amplitude and it is multiplied with by pi. So this is scaled by pi and you have because it's the frequency domain. So this is this is uh, Fourier domain, correct? So what happens here is you are adding one delta function. That means with this amplitude there is one delta function. So that is an impulse. At omega, there is an impulse at omega equal to zero whose amplitude is pi x naught. So there is an impulse function here whose amplitude is pi and x naught. This is additionally introduced because of this integration. Okay. So there is the physical interpretation of this one. Now I think I will take one more example which is more suitable uh, to illustrate the integration property I think. So here this is what is unit step is given. It is an elementary function. This elementary function I did, I did not solve for Fourier transform of this one in the in my previous lecture. It is because we need the integration property. Without the integration property, we cannot compute the Fourier transform of this unit step function. That is the, that is the reason I have not added this one in my uh, elementary signals list. Even though it is an elementary signal, I, I could not add that one because uh, to compute the transform, I need a uh, property of Fourier transforms, which I have not discussed at that time. So let us compute this and I can express the unit step function as a sum of two functions. See here there is one sine function, signum function whose amplitude is half here plus half minus half. Then I have another constant value DC value half. So you add these two what happens this positive side see this positive side 0 to infinite t equal to 0 to infinite what happens half plus half both will add up half plus half is 1 so you will get 1 here on the positive side then what happens to the negative side negative side this so negative side this negative one and this positive one both will get cancelled so that is the reason I have 0 this side negative side and for positive side I am adding these two so I will get this one so unit step function can be represented as the summation of half of the sine function and half dc value so that is what is i have written unit step function equal to half signum function plus half okay so that is what is the division now we know the Fourier transform of the signum function you already know i have shown you some hole there correct yeah i think so so here Fourier transform of the unit step function i have the two terms here substitute of the signal here then I have the half of this constant half of the signal function two functions two separately I have to find the Fourier transforms here and for this if I find you know from the Fourier uh, inversion formula what is Fourier inversion formula so it is uh, if I take any constant constant equal to 1 so constant equal to 1 means 2 pi this is basically 2 pi this is basically 2 pi delta omega but there is a half here already so this 2 and this 2 will get cancelled I will get pi delta omega and what about this signal function so for signal function if I take for a transform that is nothing but reciprocal of omega that is 1 by j omega this we already know so this shape this shape we already know that is nothing but on the left hand side and right hand side I have a nonlinear functions like this and at delta omega what is delta omega delta omega means this is delta omega delta omega means there is an impulse function at omega equal to 0 so that means this is the arrow there is a DC term here so there is a DC term here okay so DC component is available in it is shown in it is uh, visible in the uh, frequency spectrum. See, let us take this time one. And uh, what is DC? Average value of the signal. So this side it is zero. This side it is one. 
what is the average value of this one? 0 plus 1 divided by 2. So this is the average value of this signal. This is nothing but half 0 plus 1 divided by 2. So this is the average value of the signal. This val average value of the signal, it is seen as a DC component of this. Okay. And so what is the amplitude of this DC component? This is pi because in this case it is pi because 2 to a got cancelled. The amplitude of this impulse function is basically pi. Okay. So that is how this average value of the step function is reflecting into the Fourier representation. Okay. This is all shaded area is nothing but your average value. Okay. So that is what you have. So this is what all about the uh, Fourier transform of, I mean, properties of the Fourier transform. I think I will end this lecture and I will further discuss on this in my next, next lecture. Thank you very much for your attention. Like, share and subscribe. Hit the bell icon for more updates.